Hey scientists, welcome back to the Socrates Lab. I hope you don't mind, but I've already been experimenting a bit with our subject today, gravity. Today we'll be investigating a variety of objects to see that the force of gravity is constant on the Earth and it pulls things down towards the Earth's center. We'll also be discussing forces, buoyancy, and air resistance. In order to perform our gravity experiments, we're going to need some materials. We have a small fan, a baseball, tennis ball, ping pong ball. I have some tile, a tray of blocks, a tray of sand, some clay, and some paper. What could I do to make this tennis ball move? It won't just move on its own. Hmm, I could push it, roll it, or bounce it. These examples included pushes or pulls that causes things to move. Those are known as forces, push and pull. Other force examples include buoyancy, friction, air resistance, and applied force. Before we experiment with the forces just mentioned, let's discuss gravity. Remember, gravity is a pulling force that pulls things down towards the center of the Earth. See how this tennis ball drops to the ground? That's gravity pulling it there. The question now is, does gravity affect all things the same? Will the two balls fall at the same rate, even though the baseball is heavier? Let's see. Interesting. Both balls hit the table at the same time. This is because the Earth's gravity is so strong that it pulls objects like these two balls at the same speed. Now that we understand gravity a little better, let's experiment with friction. So, how does friction work anyway? We can observe friction by rolling this ball across our different materials. Make sure to really watch the motion of the ball. The ball moved pretty quickly and far across the tile. There was not a lot of friction. I wonder, how will the ball move across the sand? The ball rolled, but not very far. The sand was creating a small amount of friction, causing the ball to move only a little. I wonder how it'll move across these blocks. Wow! The blocks caused a lot of friction. I noticed that when the ball rubs or rolls against different materials, it produces different amounts of friction. Now, we aren't going to roll this ball of clay. This demonstration experiments with buoyancy and the reason why some things sink and some things float. Remember, buoyancy is an upward pushing force exerted by water. It helps things float. That sunk right away. Hmm, what would I do to make this ball of clay float longer? I know. Ha, it worked. How did I know? The change in motion is related to the surface area or the surface of something and the impact the force has on it. Gravity is typically stronger than buoyancy. But sometimes, if the surface area is large enough, buoyancy is stronger than the force of gravity. Next, it's time to experiment with surface area and how it impacts air resistance. Remember, air resistance is a pushing force created by the particles in the air that acts against gravity. This experiment tests the question, when does air resistance have the greatest impact on motion? These are two different pieces of paper that I plan to drop. One is flat, one is not. Air resistance is actually a form of friction caused by rubbing against the particles in the air. It slows the object down as it travels through the air. Just as I suspected, the air pushing up against the flat piece of paper caused it to fall much slower and sway side to side on its way down. Just like when we observe buoyancy, the amount of surface area has an effect on air resistance too. Our last experiment has to do with applied force. This is a pushing or pulling force exerted by a person, object, air, or water that pushes or pulls on an object. This experiment will test the question, what types of things can apply force to objects? 
Let's observe the impact various items have on the motion of a ball. The force of the wind was strong enough to roll the ball. We saw the force of wind was strong enough to roll the ball. But do you think water could also move the ball? Wow, what a fabulous round of experiments. Remember, all of these examples included pushes or pulls that caused things to move. These are all known as forces. I had a great time testing gravity, buoyancy, friction, air resistance, and applied force. Thanks for learning with me.